let's talk about Faith No More. Um, I picked up this article today uh, because um, Roddy Bottom, the basis for Faith No More, is is doing a book tour right now. And there's a little nugget in here that I didn't even know because I I guess I maybe wasn't following the news at the time it was reported, but about Mike Patton. So anyway, uh, the headline in a second. Sure. Semi permanent hiatus. Semi permanent. Yeah, I love that. I always chuckle Semi-permanent. at those kind of things because it's like, I, I to me, I read that and I'm like, <laughs> if guys can get their ego in check and enough money's offered, they're out there, you know. But it's it's got to be one of those two things that's holding them back. I think in this case, like also like Patton, and you'll see in this article, Patton is also like a. a f- savant like he's doing 20 different things mm. you know what i mean like mr bungle has been touring sure then he does stuff like but anyway dead um, cross dead cross yeah i, I it's funny because i was listening to the dead cross stuff the other day and i'm really starting to um <clears throat> excuse me to dig it and it just got me thinking like some of mike Patton's stuff when I first hear it, um, it's like I, it, I'm just not that into it. But it like kind of grows on you. It's like it's almost like he's like so ahead of the curve. You're like, ah, oh, I'm not ready for this yet, you know? Yeah. Um. So anyway, Faith and Morse keyboardist Roddy Bottom had reveled has reveled online that the band's kind of on semi permanent hiatus. The musician who's been in the band since 1981 wrote a post on his Substack, which is a subscription based platform where individuals can share updates. He introduced himself and shared a couple of other personal endeavors he's worked on. I've made a life for myself making music with Faith No More and Imperial Teen. Bottom wrote, FNM is kind of on semi-permanent hiatus and Imperial Teen is making a record slowly, but definitely. My book is more of an ode to San Francisco bicycle messaging, or sex work, heroin, dreadlocks, the birth of politics in punk rock, wheatgrass, witches, crystal meth coming out, self-love, and the burning down and obliteration of the great American city. It's not a tell-all, but it tells a lot, he described. So... He has a book out. I'm sure it's going to be interesting, but uh, this is the part that I kind of grabbed this for because he says, "What happened to Faith?" They say, "What happened to Faith No More?" According to Setlist.fm, Faith No More haven't played a show since August of 2016. In November of 2019, the band revealed a set of 2020 tour dates as well as a co-headlining run with Corn, but both legs were eventually postponed due to the onset of COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, I, I think I remember that because. I think it was Faith No More, Corn, and System of a Down. If I, yeah, remember. Yeah, I, remember I remember sending that. you that. You remember that? Yeah. And I, I was that. so pumped about that. And then COVID ruined it. Um, anyway, Faith No More were set to make up the, the shows in 2021. And frontman Mike Patton's other group, Mr. Bungle, were supposed to perform that year as well. However, all of the shows were can- called off when the vocalist shared, and this is the part I had no idea about, that he was dealing with mental health issues that were exacerbated by the pandemic. In the summer of 2022, Patton opened up on the issues during an interview with Rolling Stone and revealed he'd been diagnosed with agoraphobia, which the Mayo Clinic states is a type of anxiety disorder in which you feel fear and avoid places or situations that might cause you to panic and make you feel trapped, helpless, or embarrassed. <clears throat> That's like a uh, fear of crowds, kind of, um, yeah. agoraphobia. This disorder led to other issues for the singer, and he later admitted to The Guardian that he'd been drinking to help cope with them. He also admitted that there were a few issues going on within the band, though he didn't explain any further. It was unclear why the shows hadn't been rescheduled, but Bottoms Post offers a bit of insight. So that's what you were kind of that's kind of what you were saying, Joey. I think there is probably an element to that as well. Like some someone has ego or they're they're not willing to do one thing or the other, you know. But they've been doing it for a long time too. It's kind of like right. like all these bands. If you're not Metallica, maybe hang it up. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's I one of those. I mean, you, we've talked about this before, where it's like, as a fan, you want to see these bands get back together. But it's like, if they also don't have what it takes to like do it well, then just hang it up. And I want to leave with a good memory of you in my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Start a new band. <clears throat> you right. know. Super group or whatever. I wasn't really expecting much else from them, to be honest. And I'm fine with that. You know, they had a good run. They have right. plenty of good stuff that I can revisit yeah. when I want to. I have been listening to 
early Maiden a lot lately, the first two records with Paul Diano. Hmm. And uh, Killers is a really good record. Uh, I, I didn't realize, too, Iron Maiden kind of was like the precursor to death metal. Yeah, for sure. Like that song, uh, there's a song on Killers called Genghis Khan that's an instrumental, and it has like almost like like death metal parts in it, you know? Yeah, because so Metallica really- heard Iron Maiden and took that little harmony thing and kind of made it a little heavier, and then those bands all heard Metallica and Megadeth and all that stuff and kind of evolved Stepped it. it up again. I've been listening to a bunch of Suicide Silence because they also play seven strings, mm-hmm. and it's interesting because I honestly became a fan of them because of that Become the Hunter album, and I mm-hmm. didn't even really know about the Mitch Lucker stuff that much. The earlier that, stuff, they were yeah, yeah, they were almost kind of like, not like almost like I, I don't want to say emo, but they, he had the look of an emo kid. Yeah, during, yeah. During that screamo era, they're definitely. I told you we played would, a show with them during that era too. That's right? what I was thinking about. Yeah, it's interesting. They're a great band. Well, that whole situation, too, how they because a lot of people don't like this new era of them. But I thought that it's new great. Album, I think that new great. record is great. Become the Hunter is a killer album. Yeah. If you're into that kind of heavy music. 